Hi, Sabrina Mantle here. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a behind the scenes look at how I work on a painting and, uh, you know, just give you some footage and see what you think of it. Okay, so what we're going to be working on today is a rather large landscape and my idea for it is a very tiny photo, but I think I can get enough information from the photo to get something interesting going. Uh, so with that in mind, we need to come over here and mix up some paint for our palette first. Uh, but the picture we're going to be working on today has got a pretty simple palette. It's basically just uh, a blue-gray sky and a uh, yellowy-green grass. So we've just got some uh, terra vert, some Payne's gray, some French ultramarine, I think. I might go with a different blue, I don't know. Uh, thalo green, yellow, and uh, azo yellow, and white. Uh, so we'll start mixing up. I think I'll mix up the sky first, and then we'll mix up the grass color. We'll just lay in basic big swaths of color. Okay, so for the sky, I just mixed up a couple shades of gray, because we've got a lot going on in the clouds. Um, mostly it's just Payne's gray and white, and a little bit of ultramarine. Uh, thinned with a little turpentine, a little glazing medium, so we'll go ahead and... I think we'll go ahead and lay that in before we mix up the grass. Okay, let's lay in some sky. From looking at the picture, we've got a lighter corner up here. a little more turbulent in the middle. Whoa, dripping paint. Yeah, if we ever move out of this room, I'm going to have to repaint all the walls and probably careful with carpeting. At this point, I'm putting the paint on pretty thin. We're just trying to get a, you know, basically just trying to get the canvas covered at this point. Okay, so I got the basic color where I want it, and I'm not really doing anything, but like I said, rough at this point. But since I got the paint here, I can see in the picture that there is a good dark swath of cloud underbillies here, so let's just go ahead and plop some of that in there. I have to admit, I really like painting clouds. They are fun. I know this is probably a little tough to watch because <laughs> your sample over here is like about three inches, so you guys have really no clue what I'm looking at here, but all right, best I can do. Get some more white in here. Probably where the sun is behind all those clouds. Okay, so I think that's good enough to start on the sky. We'll start on the grass. 
Okay, so I actually added a couple colors to my palette here because the green grass in closer examination was a little more complex than I thought. So what I've got here is really a mixture of uh, a cool and a warm yellow, cadmium and azo, uh, and terra vert and just a touch of cadmium red. Um, and it's still not quite the color, but, you know, grass is complicated. We'll have to put a couple different layers to get the cool green parts and the orangey red parts. And we'll start with this. Oh, I forgot. That actually, uh, we actually have a kind of a vanishing point effect going on in this where the grass is just part of picture and actually over here is kind of a dull sheen of water. So let's get this sketched out properly. That's more like it. Alright. I'm really not sure what's going on right here in reality in this picture, but we'll work on it. We'll make something up. Okay, so we've got the basic yellowy green shade. I've put in just kind of a hint at where the tire tracks are. And I'm just kind of filling in. There's a little shade variation in this grass, so I'm putting in just a little bit of the darker. So important thing to keep in mind at this stage, because the colors aren't going to be what you want, is just get the value you want. How dark is the sky compared to how light the ground is, is really the main thing to get kind of blocked in at this point. And then you, of course, fine tune the color as you go. Alright, let me see if I can figure out what weird shade that water is. It's very nondescript. Okay, so this weird water is turning to be kind of a weird shade to mix up. It's just kind of, it's about the same shade as the sky, darkness-wise, but it's more kind of a greeny, browny mud color. So, I've just been trying various mud shades on here, and I think we're going to go with that one and uh, start there. Uh, I forgot to mention, to get this weird mud color, I basically just took uh, a little bit of everything on my palette and threw it together. <laughs> Okay, so near as I can tell in the picture, there's just kind of this reddish orangey bit over here. Like I said, I don't really know what it is, but let's stick it in there. Okay, so there we are. So all the color just blocked out. As you can see, this is the easy part. This this goes very quickly. Uh, although I don't expect this to be a fairly long painting, because as you can see, it's very simple. It's just all about dramatic 
color uh, and mood really so it's not a lot of detail in it I, I don't expect to spend more than a couple days on this one uh, okay well that's installment one I usually like to block in the color and then leave it uh, so it's dry, drier when I go to put in more of the details and so I'm not just pushing wet paint around um, I don't know if there's any reason for that that just seems to be the way I kinda like to do it so we will get back with you when we go into phase two. See ya!